Hey guys, this video we're going to be checking out the Furby Dinosaur Q95. This is Furby's response to the Eosheen Lizard. It is not an exact clone, it's quite a bit different actually, and we're going to go over what the differences are and what we can expect to see in terms of performance. So there's not a lot in the box here. I think you just get the drone here and you get some prop protectors, some props. I don't think it comes with a battery. It does come with a receiver you can see here. I'll get this out of here in a second. Okay, it comes with some prop guards here, and these are the same ones that came on the, uh, I believe it was the uh, Awesome F100. And uh, they got the little feet here for landing, but they're not installed, and I'm uh, not going to be installing these. You do get two sets of these Gemfan 2035 four-bladed props. These are the, currently I think, the best ones for this uh, size. Okay, so here's a look at the drone itself. Obviously, it's a two-inch drone, 95 millimeters, motor to motor. And I think the bottom plate looks pretty similar to the Lizard. I think it might be a little bit on the thinner side. We'll measure that here in a second. The top's a bit different here. Uh, you got uh, a linear whip antenna, not a circular polarized antenna. And you got these two side standoffs here instead of like a like a little camera mount thing that's a little bit different i think the camera is also different as well yeah this is like a uh, tx0102 style camera it looks like got the little led indicator on the back there and a single button and you got an xm looks like an xm plus receiver here you got two of uh, two uh, receiver antennas you got diversity so it's kind of nice that it's got a the uh, uh, XM Plus uh, Free Sky receiver. Now, um, I think uh, this was on flash sale for like $81, 80, $85, something that's like in the $80 range a few weeks back. It's not on sale anymore, but uh, if you guys picked it up from my uh, Twitter uh, feed that I put the flash sale up on this before it was actually uh, delivered to me, then uh, you'll, you'll see uh, additional sales and flash promotions on my Twitter feed, so if you want to check it out, you can get uh, special deals. So the motors on here are 1104-6000 kV, just like on the Lizard. Um, however, and I especially don't understand that decision to use a GST here because uh, it does come with a 20 amp 411 AC, so uh, you could definitely run a 3S on here with the correct connector. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not, if I'm going to switch it out for the Maiden. Uh, I haven't decided that. I'll figure that out later. But the, you know, this guy, it's got actually a better ESC stack here than a Lizard. It's a 20 amp 4 in 1. The Lizard came with a 10 amp 4 in 1. And then it obviously comes with the same flight control. It's a little bit different configuration. It's an Omnibus F3. So it does have an OSD, but the OSD is not connected on this model because this camera doesn't have the OSD connections for video in and video out. And you can see there that the pins for the OSD are not connected. So there's not going to be any OSD in the FPV feed. Okay, so we're going to take a look here at the lizard on the right and the dinosaur on the left. You can kind of see how the uh, two top sections are slightly different. It's a lot taller on the dinosaur. You can see that. Put the two side by side here. The side plates on the on the dinosaur are a little bit higher, and the way the uh, camera is situated is a little bit higher as well. Uh, so I think they they did that because you have less chance of prop strikes here. So you can see that the prop is actually going underneath in this section here, but on the, see, on the lizard, it, there were some prop strikes on, you can see here on this prop here and this one here, on certain maneuvers, the props would bend and then they would hit the carbon here, right in that spot. So I'm thinking that they probably changed that design, raised it up, so there's, there would be less chance of a prop strike on this side, this part of the frame, and there's enough should be enough clearance here in the back. Yeah, there's plenty. There's enough clearance in the back, a couple millimeters, so that shouldn't be an issue in the back, and the front should be fine as well. So that's why probably why they did that in terms of the design change. And then uh, not exactly sure why they went with the the uh, ex extra carbon here on the top for this particular model because you don't really need it for these whip antennas. I mean, yeah, it'll protect it, but uh, uh, these are really meant to protect the circular polarized antennas from getting squished in a crash. So it's just, I think this is just extra weight. It's probably not really needed, and so I'm pretty sure you could take that off if you wanted to without any issues. 
Another thing that's different here is that the uh, eachine version comes with a 20 by 20 board for the receiver. And that's this top board right here. This happens to be a, I think this is a Flosky receiver. And includes a buzzer. And then on the dinosaur, the buzzer's in the back. And then the receiver is a separate, uh, like, individual receiver here. That's this uh, foam tape to the top. That's uh, that's the Free Sky version. And so there's not an extra board here. So that's why I think it looks like you have a little bit more space here. Because there's a that third board that's in the lizard here is not uh, being used. Okay, so I just wanted to compare the thickness of the main plate on the lizard. It's two and a half millimeters. This is one of the first versions of the lizards. I think they might have reduced this to two millimeters on the current production versions of the lizards. So something to keep in mind, they think that they might have changed that. So on the dinosaur here, we're at 1.9 millimeters or two millimeters. So skinnier, I think that they're probably using the same bottom plate that the original lizard was based off of and kind of compare the two. They're both 95 millimeters. So it, they probably are using the, the reduced two millimeter plate. I'm not sure if that's necessarily going to mean that the arms are going to break easier, but obviously that increases your chances of breaking. It doesn't seem like it's too flexible. It's a little bit flexible here, and obviously it's going to be more than on the lizard. I have crashed this lizard uh, quite a bit, and this arm is very, very strong, and I haven't cracked any of these arms yet, and through a lot of crashes into a lot of trees. So on the bottom here, you got that same design issue where the Basically the two side plates are protruding downwards and you got this standoff here underneath uh, to basically hold the two side plates onto the bottom plate. So you're going to need a piece of foam or something here uh, underneath to uh, protect the battery so it doesn't get dented by these, uh, basically these two uh, notches from the side plates. So you're going to need a fairly thick piece of foam. I usually use that stuff that comes with the FPV cameras and cut that down and stick that on there. That usually works and then I'm gonna probably get rid of this Velcro strap like I always do and just use, use the rubber bands I use. And in terms of the battery, I'm probably gonna use a, the same size battery that the Lizard came with, something like in the 500-550 uh, milliamp hour range and I'm gonna be flying this on 3S. Okay so I was not able to get this camera to work. Uh, I tried every channel and just could not get any kind of video signal out of this so Thinking this camera is defective. I mean, power is on, but none of the channels would tune to any of the channels that I would normally receive on any of my FPV receivers. So, yeah, I gave up on this camera. I decided to just get rid of it. And while I was at it, I went ahead and I did the Micro Swift upgrade. And the difference between this frame and the one in the Lizard is that the side plates are wider. So you can stick the Swift in here with just a, I have a, a, some, just a little bit of some washers there on the side, but it fits in perfectly. And you probably, um, I don't know, I, I put it in this hole here, but you could probably stick it further back and give the camera a lens a little bit more protection. I have my video transmitter um, behind the camera, so I couldn't really get it further back. But if you have, if you put your video transmitter flat down here ab uh, below the receiver, you could probably get your uh, Microsoft back onto this uh, cut out over here and then it'll be a little bit more protected. So I, I don't particularly care, but uh, you, should probably, you, you guys could do that if you want. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? I changed the receiver because I wanted to fly with my Evolution. So I have a FlySky receiver in there and I um, swapped out the XT or the JST for an XT30. Um, I'm going to get rid of these legs here uh, and actually going to soften out the motors instead so that they can use the same screws. And I did uh, connect the video transmitter and camera to the OSD, so I have, uh, have the OSD enabled now. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna um, also flash Betaflight 321 in here. It, it came with, um, whatever was on here was flashing, it had absolutely nothing configured. So I'm just gonna flash Betaflight 321. I'm gonna reverse my motor, so I'm gonna reverse all the motor directions in the ESC with the LLES configurator. And I'll put a CLA dump to the uh, setup that I'm going to be rough flying for the uh, flight demo. And uh, you guys can uh, copy those settings to fly this in the same way. I think it'll fly pretty well. Um, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll take it off the field and we'll do a little flight demo. Okay, let's compare the weight of the Lizard. This is the unmodified Lizard. 
and the dinosaur which I put the Microsoft in and did the soft mounting and all the other things here um, got rid of the original camera the dinosaur comes in at 66.1 grams the original lizard comes in at 67.3 grams so it's about a gram lighter for the modified dinosaur versus the original lizard and I think that's because of the weight savings in the thinner base plate uh, you can see the main plate is a little bit thinner so you have less carbon less strength on the dinosaur here but less weight and then also got rid of the carbon pieces here for the that protect the circuit the polarized antenna that those are gone uh, I don't have that on here and uh, so that kind of makes up for the weight of the extra weight of the Microsoft so uh, this is actually lighter than the original lizards So as I mentioned before, I am running uh, the newest Betaflight 321 on here. I am running the dynamic filter with all of the uh, filters off and it flies totally great on here. It just feels really nice. The power feels about the same as the original Lizard. And uh, in terms of the tuning, you're going to have to lower the D-gain from the standard or stock D-gain. Uh, again, my P-PIDs are going to be in the CLI dump in the description. Uh, the motors do run pretty warm on the default uh, D gain, so I would uh, recommend uh, using the ones in my CLA dump. The, the motors ran much cooler. Still pretty warm. These motors do run warmer than uh, the ones on the Lizard for some reason, even though they're pretty similar. But they are—they don't run too hot. I mean, they, they don't run to the point where they, you can't hold them in your fingers. So, but something to keep in mind. And if your D gain is too high, you're going to burn the motors. Out, so just be beware of that. So overall, my impression of this model is that it flies pretty much the same as the a Lizard. Um, you know, it's got similar KV motors and prop size and everything. However, uh, I like this model perhaps a little bit better because you can um, put the Microsoft in here right out of the box. And, uh, and to be totally honest, I, 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 you know, my camera didn't work, so I, I don't I don't know how good or bad the quality of the camera is. But I did see Andy RC's review, and, and it looked like the camera looked pretty bad in his video. So I would recommend changing the camera anyway and getting a Micro Swift, and it's pretty easy to put in there. Uh, once you do that, you can see even in these really challenging lighting conditions, it's totally flyable. Uh, the video actually looked better in the goggles, and then uh, here in the DVR recording, it's a little bit uh, too dark. Uh, but yeah, if you want to fly uh, at sunset like I did here with the Micro Swift, uh, this is definitely a way, the way to go. And uh, on this model, the Micro Swift upgrade is very easy to do. And I thought this thing flew really great on 321 with the PIDs I put in here. This is like the fourth battery I flew. I was kind of tweaking the PIDs, uh, getting some uh, vibrations and prop wash and stuff. And I got rid of all that stuff with the PIDs that are in the CLI dump. As you can see here, almost no prop wash, no oscillations, no vibrations, and the uh, props sound really clean. Now I'm getting some video noise, and I think these ESCs are a little bit noisier, so. I'd recommend actually taking the thing apart and putting a capacitor on the battery leads. Uh, I didn't do that. Here's usually these micros don't need it, but I think that these these 20 amp ECs are a little bit noisier, and of course the you know, the um, the amp draw is going to be higher on uh, 3S. The battery I'm using for this flight here is the actually the same one that came with the Lizard. It's the 3S550. Um, I'll put that in the description. You can also go with a GNB. Uh, 550 as well. It's a little bit heavier, but uh, they're pretty similar in performance and uh, they all fly just fine. <laughs> 